Patrick McPeerish, or Patrick Pierce, as he was known in English, the leader of the Easter Week insurrection, was a schoolmaster and a poet who made many songs, both in Gaelic and in English. Here are some of them. The Fool. Since the wise men have not spoken, I speak that I'm only a fool. A fool that hath loved his folly, yea, more than the wise men their books or their counting houses or their quiet homes or their fame in men's mouths. A fool that in all his days hath done never a prudent thing, never hath counted the cost, nor recked if another reap the fruit of his mighty sowing, content to scatter the seed. A fool that is unrepentant, and that soon at the end of all shall laugh in his lonely heart as the ripe years fall to the reaping hooks, and the poor are filled that were empty, though he go hungry. I have squandered the splendid years that the Lord God gave to my youth in attempting impossible things, deeming them alone worth the toil. Was it folly or grace? Not men shall judge me, but God. I have squandered the splendid years. Lord, if I had the years, I would squander them over again. I fling them from me. For this I have heard in my heart, that a man shall scatter, not hoard, shall do the deed of today, nor take thought of tomorrow's teen, shall not bargain or huckster with God, or was it a jest of Christ's? And is this my sin before men, to have taken him at his word? The lawyers have sat in council, the men with the keen, long faces, and said, this man is a fool, and others have said, he blasphemeth. And the wise have pitied the fool that hath striven to give a life in the world of time and space among the bulks of actual things to a dream that was dreamed in the heart and that only the heart could hold. O oh, wise men, riddle me this. What if the dream come true? What if the dream come true? And if millions unborn shall dwell in the house that I shaped in my heart, the noble house of my thought. Lord, I have staked my soul. I have staked the lives of my kin on the truth of thy dreadful word. Do not remember my failures. But remember this, my faith. And so I speak. Yea, ere my hot youth pass, I speak to my people and say, Ye shall be as foolish as I. Ye shall scatter, not save. Ye shall venture your all, lest ye lose what is more than all. Ye shall call for a miracle, taking Christ at his word. And for this I will answer, O oh, people. Answer here and hereafter, O oh, people that I have loved. Shall we not answer together? The rebel. I am come of the seed of the people, the people that sorrow that have no treasure but hope, no riches laid up but a memory of an ancient glory. My mother bore me in bondage, in bondage my mother was born. I am of the blood of serfs, the children with whom I have played, the men and women with whom I have eaten, have had masters over them have been under the lash of masters, and though gentle have served churls. The hands that have touched mine, the dear hands whose touch is familiar to me have worn shameful manacles, have been bitten at the wrist by manacles, have grown hard with the manacles and the task work of strangers. I am flesh of the flesh of these lowly. I am born of their bone. I that have never submitted, 
I that have a soul greater than the souls of my people's masters. I that have vision and prophecy and the gift of fiery speech. I that have spoken with God on the top of his holy hill. And because I am of the people, I understand the people. I am sorrowful with their sorrow. I am hungry with their desire. My heart has been heavy with the grief of mothers. My eyes have been wet with the tears of children. I have yearned with old wistful men and laughed or cursed with young men. Their shame is my shame, and I have reddened for it. Reddened for that they have served, they who should be free. Reddened for that they have gone in want while others have been full. Reddened for that they have walked in fear of lawyers and of their jailers, with their writs of summons and their handcuffs, men mean and cruel. Oh, I could have borne stripes on my body rather than this shame of my people. And now I speak, being full of vision. I speak to my people and I speak in my people's name to the masters of my people. I say to my people that they are holy, that they are august despite their chains that they are greater than those that hold them, and stronger and purer, that they have but need of courage and to call on the name of their God, God the unforgetting, the dear God who loves the peoples for whom he died naked, suffering shame. And I say to my people's masters, beware. Beware of the thing that is coming. Beware of the risen people who shall take what ye would not give. Did ye think to conquer the people? Or that law is stronger than life and than men's desire to be free? We will try it out with you, ye that have harried and held. Ye that have bullied and bribed. Tyrants, hypocrites, liars. Renunciation. Naked I saw thee, O beauty of beauty, and I blinded my eyes for fear I should fail. I heard thy music, O melody of melody, and I closed my ears for fear I should falter. I tasted thy mouth, O sweetness of sweetness, and I hardened my heart for fear of my slaying. I blinded my eyes and I closed my ears. I hardened my heart and I smothered my desire. I turned my back on the vision I had shaped and to this road before me I turned my face. I have turned my face to this road before me to the deed that I see, and the death I shall die. Here is the same poem by Pierce in the original form in which he wrote it. Fornoch de Honaku. Fornoch de Honaku, all ye na hal ye, is the rallest mahul at Aglagastan him. The whole is the whole, a vinya ne binyas, the horn is mochlos, er aglaga glishin. The vlash is the veil, a vilche ne milche, is the chros mochri, er aglama vilche. The rales mochols mochlos, the horn is, the chros mochri is ma vien the wochas. The hogas mochol er neschling the hummus. Seren rod shorom my the hogus. The hogus mohno sheren rod shorom er niv the him seren mos the yohad. This is the proclamation issued to the people of Ireland by the leaders of the rising of 1916. It was roughly printed and it was posted onto many walls in the city of Dublin 
on the morning of Easter Monday. Hublat Neheren, the provisional government of the Irish Republic, to the people of Ireland, Irish men and Irish women, in the name of God and of the dead generations from which she receives her old tradition of nationhood, Ireland, through us, summons her children to her flag and strikes for her freedom. Having organized and trained her manhood through her secret revolutionary organization, the Irish Republican Brotherhood, and through her open military organizations, the Irish Volunteers and the Irish Citizen Army, having patiently perfected her discipline, having resolutely waited for the right moment to reveal itself, she now seizes that moment and supported by her exiled children in America and by gallant allies in Europe, but relying in the first on her own strength, she strikes in full confidence of victory. We declare the right of the people of Ireland to the ownership of Ireland and to the unfettered control of Irish destinies to be sovereign and indefeasible. The long usurpation of that right by a foreign people and government has not extinguished the right, nor can it ever be extinguished except by the destruction of the Irish people. In every generation, the Irish people have asserted their right to national freedom and sovereignty. Six times during the past 300 years, they have asserted it in arms. Standing on that fundamental right and again asserting it in arms in the face of the world, we hereby proclaim the Irish Republic as a sovereign, independent state. And we pledge our lives and the lives of our comrades in arms to the cause of its freedom, of its welfare and of its exaltation among the nations. The Irish Republic is entitled to and hereby claims the allegiance of every Irish man and Irish woman. The Republic guarantees religious and civil liberty, equal rights and equal opportunities to all its citizens and declares its resolve to pursue the happiness and prosperity of the whole nation and of all its parts cherishing all the children of the nation equally and oblivious of the differences carefully fostered by an alien government which have divided a minority from the majority in the past. Until our arms have brought the opportune moment for the establishment of a permanent national government representative of the whole people of Ireland and elected by the suffrages of all her men and women, the provisional government hereby constituted will administer the civil and military affairs of the Republic in trust for the people. We place the cause of the Irish Republic under the protection of the Most High God whose blessing we invoke upon our arms, and we pray that no one who serves that cause will dishonor it by cowardice, inhumanity, or rapine. In this supreme hour, the Irish nation must, by its valor and discipline, and by the readiness of its children to sacrifice themselves for the common good, prove itself worthy of the august destiny to which it is called. Signed on behalf of the provisional government, Thomas J. Clark, Sean McGermond, Thomas McDonough, P. H. Pierce, Eamon Kent, James Connolly, Joseph Plunkett. I am Ireland. I am Ireland. I am older than the old woman of Bear. Great my glory, I that bore Coo the Valiant. Great my shame my own children that sold their mother. I am Ireland. I am lonelier than the old woman of Bear. And here is the same poem in its own language. Mische Ehre. Mische Ehre. Schinnemen an Chaljach Bear. Moor Mogloer, Mederuk Kuchelen Kroge, Moor Manoer, 
Mahlan fain the yeel mahir. Misha ere. Wegni men an halyach beer. William Butler Yeats, who died in 1939, was Ireland's greatest poet in the English language. He was a patriot too, and many of his poems were filled with what in Irish is called Chir Ra, the love of country. He was filled too with a sense of the past, and remembering the penal days when the name of Ireland was forbidden to be spoken in song or ballad, he made this poem in honor of his country and of the poet Hanrahan, and he used one of the names of Ireland's secret love. Read Hanrahan's song about Ireland. The old brown thorn trees break in two high over common strand, under a bitter black wind that blows from the left hand. Our courage breaks like an old tree in a black wind and dies. But we have hidden in our hearts the flame out of the eyes of Kathleen, the daughter of Houlihan. The wind has bundled up the clouds high over Knocknaray and thrown the thunder on the stones for all that Maeve can say. Angers that are like noisy clouds have set our hearts a beat, but we have all bent low and low and kissed the quiet feet of Kathleen, the daughter of Houlihan. The yellow pool has overflowed high up on Clothnaber, for the wet winds are blowing out of the clinging air. Like heavy flooded waters, our bodies and our blood, but purer than a tall candle before the holy rood is Kathleen, the daughter of Houlihan. Yeats celebrated the insurrection of 1916 in many songs. Here are two of them. Easter 1916 I have met them at close of day coming with vivid faces from counter or desk among grey 18th century houses. I have passed with a nod of the head or polite meaningless words or have lingered a while and said polite meaningless words and thought before I had done of a mocking tale or a jibe to please a companion around the fire at the club, being certain that they and I but lived where motley is worn. All changed, changed utterly, a terrible beauty is born. That woman's days were spent in ignorant goodwill, her nights in argument until her voice grew shrill. What voice more sweet than hers when young and beautiful she rode to Harriers? This man had kept a school and rode our winged horse. This other, his helper and friend, was coming into his force. He might have won fame in the end. So sensitive his nature seemed, so daring and sweet his thought. This other man I had dreamed, a drunken, vain, glorious lout. He had done most bitter wrong to some who are near my heart. Yet I number him in the song. He too has resigned his part in the casual comedy. He too has been changed in his turn, transformed utterly. A terrible beauty is born. Hearts with one purpose alone through summer and winter seem enchanted to a stone to trouble the living stream. The horse that comes from the road, the rider, the birds that range from cloud to tumbling cloud, 
minute by minute they change. A shadow of cloud on the stream changes minute by minute. A horse hoof slides on the brim and a horse plashes within it. Where long-legged moor hens dive and hens to moorcocks call. Minute by minute they live, the stones in the midst of all. Too long a sacrifice can make a stone of the heart. Oh, when may it suffice? That is heaven's part. Our part to murmur name upon name as a mother names her child when sleep at last has come on limbs that had run wild. What is it but nightfall? No, no. Not night, but death. Was it needless death after all? For England may keep faith for all that is done and said. We know their dream, enough to know they dreamed and are dead. And what if excess of love bewildered them till they died? I write it out in a verse, Macdonough and Macbride and Connolly and Pierce, now and in time to be wherever green is worn are changed, changed utterly. A terrible beauty is born. The Rose Tree O oh, words are lightly spoken, said Pierce to Connolly. Maybe a breath of politic words has withered our rose tree, or maybe but a wind that blows across the bitter sea. It needs to be but watered, James Connolly replied, to make the green come out again and spread on every side and shake the blossom from the bud to be the garden's pride. But where can we draw water, said Pierce to Connolly, when all the wells are parched away? Oh, plain as plain can be, there's nothing but our own red blood can make a right rose tree.